Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, very short introduction into STM8 microcontrollers. Uh, let's call this 8-bit is not dead, definitely not. I'm Simon, I'm an embedded electronics engineer and you can find me on GitHub there. So, to begin with, you might even ask why 8-bit to begin with? Why use 8-bit microcontrollers if you come uh, from STM32 or something similar, perhaps? Uh, I have this example right here from the company that I work at. Uh, we have a battery powered device uh, which we which is low cost uh, certainly and we want to indicate the battery level like red, green and orange uh, with a hysteresis depending uh, where the voltage is at. So at one point we all went to school and there was uh, something uh, this little chip there called a comparator and you can uh, you heard something about uh, hysteresis and uh, you can set voltage levels and indeed there's this uh, analog devices article that shows you how to do that and uh, we then calculated the uh, resistor values for the voltages that we wanted and we quickly found out that these resistor values you need four of them uh, they need to be quite precise, and uh, precise resistors cost money. So you end up at like 10 cents per resistor, plus the uh, analog IC. And if you check the price of a uh, STM8 microcontroller, it's also 50 cents. And you are much more flexible with the voltage levels, uh, because you have an ADC on board. So that's why the, we decided to use an STM8 microcontroller instead. So the STM8 uh, system has many different branches. You can look them up yourself. Uh, we ended up using a very small one um, in an SO8 casing uh, with this uh, discovery kit. Uh, they are the cheapest devices uh, ST has to offer and that's what we work with currently. And the uh, next thing you need is a development environment. You'll quickly find that there's a STM8 Cube MX out there from ST. Uh, by the looks you can see it looks like the old version of uh, the STM32 Cube MX and you can do similar things. You can config configure the input outputs and you have your uh, peripherals there, your timers, uh, you can set that all up, but there's no code generation unfortunately. So the STM8 Cubemix is purely for uh, hardware design and to double or to, check, to pick your microcontroller and to check if it works with your other embedded components. Uh, I then chose uh, the IA our embedded workbench for STM8, which is the most modern IDE for uh, STM8 microcontrollers. There's older ones out there uh, that didn't work for me. Uh, I'm happy with this one. Uh, as you can see, they offer two uh, trial versions. I went for the uh, size limited evaluation version as uh, my program is very small. I only need ADCs and toggle an LED, more or less, so that works for me. And next thing you need, or uh, would be helpful, are some sort of hardware abstraction libraries. Uh, if you come from uh, STM32, you have these HAL libraries. In STM8, you have something similar called standard peripheral libraries, but you have to set them up all by yourself, as you don't have a code generation mechanism anywhere. So you can download the zip files and uh, you can extract the uh, library files for all your peripherals and you have to handpick uh, the source files that you require for your, uh, for your system. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, a disadvantage between the two versions listed there, you have uh, different devices, the S and the L line. And the libraries, they don't, they are not compatible. They don't match with uh, uh, letter cases for function names and uh, things like that. Uh, they are 
not compatible. However, you have uh, examples inside these libraries that you can download, uh, which show you how to use the peripherals, which show you how to use the ADC and the timers and all that stuff. So that's all there and uh, whatever you need, you can copy, paste into your main file and uh, configure your software. And that concludes this part. I will now move over to a uh, to the IAR Studio to show you what that looks like. Uh, so I've got it here. This is my current project that I'm working at. And um, <clears throat> pardon. Uh, here in the source file, these are the uh, standard peripheral libraries that you can copy. And as you can see, for example, timer three is missing as it is uh, either it's not present on the platform or uh, I don't use it. So you have to be careful to select your source files. And then you have a main file, which is empty at the beginning. Uh, and you have the configuration of H. So here you uh, define the type of microcontroller that you use and uh, afterwards all the includes uh, happen. This also serves as a double check to see if your selected microcontroller actually supports uh, ADCs or other peripherals as they get included here. And then in the main file you have your uh, definitions and your main function where you have uh, your usual program that is running. And below here you have the configuration functions, the init functions, uh, which is mostly copied from uh, examples that you find inside the standard peripheral drivers. You can also include third-party uh, software. I have a uh, WS2812 library for the RGB LED, as you will see right now. I'm going to move over to a quick demo. Here is the current prototype that I'm working on, and I have the STM8 discovery board right here. I uh, use it to like unplug the the chip, plug it in here, program it, uh, and then switch it over here to the custom hardware. Uh, which is uh, this battery powered device, as I mentioned, and I have this button, and this is just a demo which has a RGB LED on it, which is uh, this uh, Neo Pixels that you know, uh, as we all know from the gaming industry, RGB makes everything better. Uh, so that's this quick demo that I have on here, and I'm still working on the ADC. But I'm quite happy with. Uh, the standard peripheral libraries, it's its really not a complex chip for that matter. Uh, very simple and uh, good examples. So you're, you'll find your way around, it's pretty fast.